What I'm talking about at the conference is the role of economic evaluation um, in the NICE decision-making process. And NICE is the National Institute for Health and Care uh, Excellence and they make decisions on behalf of the NHS for England about whether we should reimburse particular technologies, um, quite often medicines. And that's particularly relevant to the people at this conference because quite a lot of the uh, products and technologies that go through NICE are medicines for oncology and haematology. And so the role of, uh, the reason why I'm here today is to talk about how we use economic evaluation. And this is because NICE doesn't just look at whether a medicine is cheaper than the other ones that are around, and it doesn't just look at whether medicines are more effective than the other ones that are around. It looks at, is this medicine more effective, but then is it more expensive, and what's the trade-off uh, between the cost and the outcomes, and can the NHS afford that extra benefit? And it's a very difficult decision to make, and it's a long and deliberative decision-making process that involves pulling together lots of evidence from um, companies, um, who make the products and their competitors and also we get input from clinical and patient experts all the way through so there's a stakeholder process, a stakeholder consultation process. We're interested in overall quality of life and we use something called a quality adjusted life year whereby one year in perfect health is one quality or one quality adjusted life year and that's to enable us to compare across different treatments so um, it's a generic outcome which means we can use the outcome in different disease states. And so that, that framework is used in all NICE decision making and what I'm going to do is talk about how we generate um, the, the information that's used in the decision making process and then how that's used in the decision making. So if you have, um, so if you have a product for metastatic uh, prostate cancer for example and say you wanted to compare enzalutamide with abiraterone which are two products for uh, prostate cancer then you would look at um, the increase in survival for both of those medicines and then you would convert that into quality adjusted life years and then you would look and say which of those is producing more qualities and then you would look at the overall costs of the process if you were using one medicine or the other and then say okay what's the cost um, compared or with one or the other and then you say well what is the cost of producing one extra quality and that's called the ISO the incremental cost effectiveness ratio and if that ISA is under £20,000 per quality, then generally NICE will recommend that the medicine is reimbursed to the NHS. And if it's over 30000 then NICE will say no. It should, it's not cost-effective use of resources. And that's where the difficulties come in because then you're saying no to a medicine and people who might have benefited from that medicine aren't going to get it. Clinicians who want to use it and their patients aren't able to use it. So, the standard, I'm going to go through the standard approaches to um, economic evaluation that are used at NICE. There's the single technology appraisal, which is where you just look at one medicine versus current practice. So you might look at, for example, abiraterone versus standard practice. Um, that's the most common um, type of methodology that we use. And then we have particular examples or, or sort of special cases where we have um, something called the end of life criteria. So if somebody is being treated for an illness where, um, they, where the disease is considered terminal, so they have less than two years left to live, and if the treatment that is um, being considered is considered to give more than three months extra life uh, span over an existing treatment um, and it's in a, a cancer population of fewer than 7,000 in England then that would have a higher ISA threshold so then the cost per quality can go up to 50,000 so that's a separate um, sort of set of criteria. We also have something called the Cancer Drugs Fund and this is where drugs that um, or products or interventions that are not considered to be cost effective according to standard criteria to go into routine commissioning um, can go into the Cancer Drugs Fund if it's considered that if we collected more information about effectiveness and costs it might mean that the ISA came down under the threshold so then the drug goes into the Cancer Drugs Fund and is provided to the patients in that way.